Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a desert storm on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So we have a large lightning bolt that is lighting up the desert landscape and we have all the pretty rain in the background. I'm going to go over the colors and brushes I used for this painting. So I used titanium white, Prussian blue, these are the Liquitex Basics acrylic paints, Mars Black, I used Cerulean Blue and Raw Umber, and I also used Deep Violet. So six colors in this tutorial. I used quite a few brushes for this. I used a three quarter inch flat wash brush, a number eight round brush, and a number four round brush. These three are Princeton Velvet Touch brushes that come in a pack together. I used a 12 bright brush and this little tiny 10 zero round spotter brush and that's going to be useful when we paint our really fine line details in our lightning. You can also use a white paint pen for the lightning to help you out. The problem with the white paint pen is this one doesn't get as bright as titanium white paint does, but you can definitely utilize it to help you with your fine lines. We're going to start by painting the background of this and it's a blended background of acrylic paint that goes in a vertical direction to create the impression of rain or virga in the sky. So we are going to go ahead and find where our horizon line is. Basically this line is where our land ends and where the base of our mountain will be. So we want to know where that line is because everything above that line is going to be our vertical blend of colors. So you saw me measure two and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas and I did a horizontal line. You can estimate if you don't want to measure it just about two to three inches from the bottom. And then we, I have my palette loaded with four colors, titanium white, Prussian blue, cerulean blue, and deep violet. And we'll be using those four colors to create our pretty rainy storm background. And this is going to be a lot of fun because there's really no way to mess this up. Yours will look different from mine because your colors may blend differently or you may grab different amounts of some of the colors. So I loaded my wash brush, we're just going to call this the big flat brush, in the water and kind of tapped it dry and distribute that into the Prussian blue. And we want the top part of the sky to be a little bit darker than the bottom, um, so that's why I'm starting with this Prussian blue. It should be a relatively thin later layer, that's why I'm utilizing that water to kind of thin it down, but it's not watercolor consistency, it shouldn't be dripping down your canvas, just a relatively thin layer and that little pop of water also helps with the blending of the colors. So I started with the Prussian blue and I'm doing full width strokes with my brush going in a vertical direction. So we're trying to create the impression of Virga or rain that is falling down that we see in the clouds way in the distance. And then we can grab that lighter blue, that cerulean blue. So the dark blue, lighter blue, and let those blend together. Those two blues blend very nicely together. And we're just going in a vertical direction. I could go all the way down to my horizon line, but I'm choosing to kind of stop in the middle because I want to blend some different colors below there. But if you wanted to, you can go all the way down if that's fine, because we are going to go all the way down anyway. And as I approach the middle, I'm grabbing some of the purple color, that deep violet color, and that color blends very nicely with our blues as well. Still going in that uh, same direction, gently blending those colors together, but the trick is that we don't want to over blend it. We want a nice mix of our colors uh, without over blending it. Um, keep in mind these are super dark colors, so our sky is going to end up being very, very dark. We are going to utilize the white to kind of brighten it up um, to create some different contrast in the sky. We'll use the white and also because there's lightning in the sky, the lightning could perhaps be lighting up some of that sky. So I'm going to grab some of this white and before this even dries, I'm going to go in and blend some white in there. And so we have kind of a brighter streak area of the sky. You can blend that white into my purple right there and you'll create some very pretty new colors just by utilizing that white. And you can see how we have lots of pretty cool colors 
in the sky and we're not over blending them. I can grab my blue and white. So basically it really doesn't matter. Um, again, we want to kind of keep the top part of the sky a little bit darker, but it doesn't matter the combination of color you use. If you're using these four colors in whatever combination you end up using, it's going to look very pretty. So just keep applying that. And I am going to have to go in and start working the bottom part of the sky. And it's okay that it doesn't match. So right here I'm grabbing purple and a little bit of that blue, grab some white. So this one, we're still going in that vertical direction and going down to that line that we drew. If we have to paint past that line, that is okay because we can always go back and paint over it. But just kind of the same technique going up into the sky. Having streaks of white in there helps really create that rain effect. And again, just filling up the rest of your sky. Um, grabbing a little bit extra white towards the bottom is helpful to create kind of a brighter bottom part of their sky. Um, I know there's going to be a gigantic lightning bolt, um, lightning bolt in the center of the painting. So um, knowing that's going to happen, I am going to add just a little bit extra white, uh, brighter color towards the center. So it kind of creates the impression that that lightning is um, making that part of the sky a little bit brighter. So right here in the middle, extra white. I can take that white and kind of streak it all the way up into the sky but still allowing it to blend with the rest of the sky. And it's okay if um, this bottom part does not blend um, perfectly with the top part, that is okay. It's a storm, we have different color variations all throughout our sky. I'm just gonna gently blend this up. And there we have our background for this painting, a really pretty blend of purples and blues. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse our brush off and we're going to do the ground. And the ground I did with cerulean blue and titanium white. So the light blue and the white. So about equal amounts, I'm just gonna grab both of those colors on my brush. I can mix them together on my palette, but if the light blue and the white don't mix all the way on your palette. That's fine because they can mix on the canvas as well. And I'm going to do horizontal strokes going to that line. If you need to go back and measure your line again uh, or redefine that horizontal line, you can. You can even take a T-square ruler and place it on uh, where your horizon line is and use that T-square ruler as a guideline for helping you paint that line. If that line is not perfectly straight, that is okay. We can have a land that is not even. The land could be kind of hilly back here. We have a black mountain that's gonna go over it, but even the base of that mountain doesn't have to be straight. And so just filling this whole area up with the light blue and the white going horizontal strokes all the way to the bottom of the canvas. When you are done with that step, you'll want to load your palette with Mars Black. We will be using a number eight round brush and the Mars Black to paint our large mountain that's in the distance above the horizon line. And if you want to, uh, you could measure this. So the highest peak of the mountain is going to be about 
four inches high. So that'll give you kind of an estimate of where our top of our mountain is and pretty much like the rest of the sky above that mountain is what we have to work with when we paint our lightning strike. So if that helps, you can measure four inches for your highest peak. And then everything below that is uh, smaller. So I started at my highest peak and used the black. Slightly water it down. That's how you get it to be all flowy like this. And you basically outline the shape of your mountain. So we have a uh, kind of curvy, wavy little lines. Um, they don't; those peaks don't really go to a point. They're kind of curved, and they just kind of go down from the left and the right. And so once you define your mountain shape, you can go ahead and paint it in solid black. So using that black going all the way down to our horizon line. And you can do kind of um, wavy strokes all throughout to create some texture in that mountain. It doesn't have to be uh, horizontal or vertical strokes, just kind of wavy, putting pressure on that brush to create those kind of bigger strokes. And I'm purposefully doing this. I'm not making the base of my mountain straight. I'm kind of making it a little bit wavy and uneven on the base of the mountain. So it might overlap our uh, horizon line just a little bit. I'm just filling this in solid black. In a later step, we will dry brush some highlight on this mountain to give it some more depth and to make it look like the lightning is kind of shining on it. But for now, we've defined our mountain and then we can go ahead and define our another land area. So there's a brown land area on the bottom of the painting and I used raw umber and titanium white for that. So load your palette with the brown and rinse your four round brush off and load some fresh titanium white on there too. We'll be mixing the brown and the white together. So rinse the number eight round brush off, get all that black off of it and dry it and then we will grab our brown. So this land area starts up a little bit higher. I'm gonna start on the right side, a little bit higher, pretty close to the base of that mountain. There's maybe a half an inch of space, through half an inch, three quarter inch of space below that mountain base to where this land is. And it's going to dip down in the middle. So again, I'm painting an uneven line. It's going to dip down in the middle get lower and then it's going to dip back up over on the left. So kind of a, a shelf land area. So this, the blue is our kind of a flat area of desert land in the distance where we can create our smaller saguaro cacti. And then on this brown land, we can paint our larger saguaro cacti. So I'm gonna grab some white um, I want the brown to be a little bit darker at the top and I'm utilizing that white to do some wet on wet blending. So my brown gently kind of mixes with that white and it gradually gets a little bit lighter. I'm painting in sort of textured strokes. Basically that means that I'm just taking the brush and kind of painting in crisscross X style strokes. They don't have to be going horizontal. They could be going in different directions, overlapping each other, and you don't need to blend it all the way. Again, a little bit of pop, a little bit pop of white towards the bottom. Blend that in so your brown is lighter on the bottom and a little bit darker at the top. I'm going back in with a little bit more brown and doing that textured stroke thing that I was talking about earlier. Um, so you see pops of like that darker brown but not blended all the way. That creates some texture in the land. Next we're going to paint our large lightning bolt. This is my favorite part of the painting. There's something super therapeutic about painting a lightning bolt. Um, I used the, the 
It's a 10-0 spotter brush. It's a little tiny round brush. I dipped it in the water and kind of pinched the bristles to make sure those bristles are all gathered. You can use a liner brush or whatever smallest round brush that you own. It would be super helpful for this. So we're gonna start with our largest bolt and I'm not starting at the very edge, top edge of the canvas. I'm starting about an inch down because the bolt is going to be coming from kind of a shelf cloud. And I'm gonna start by doing a line. This line is thin, but it's going to be our thickest line. So I'm gonna press a little bit harder with this bolt and I'm going in kind of a zigzag formation, but it's not exactly going to a point. Um, as I reload the brush, it kind of helps to twist the brush as you're loading that white on the brush to get that white right there on the tip. You need a nice steady hand for this. The line doesn't stay consistent. It kind of varies, like it might get thick in some areas and thin in others. And I'm just loosely, gradually bringing this lightning bolt down to my mountain. So it's gonna be striking the top or behind somewhere along that elevated part of the landscape is where our lightning bolt is going to be. So there is our main bolt. This is the brightest part of our lightning bolt. So it's a thicker line. We are going to be doing um, some thinner lines going outward. So there's some uh, bolts of lightning Part of this lightning bolt kind of branches out for here and this line is super thin in fact i'm holding this brush so lightly that it's barely grazing the canvas you want it to be in a very loose kind of wiggly line so you can kind of wiggle your hand a little bit as you're creating your branch and it's not a consistent line it might kind of buckle and um, not um, continuously go along the canvas. There might be some blank spots because you're holding it so lightly. So I'm going to have this one branch out this way. I found it helpful to look at pictures of lightning, some photographs of lightning. Uh, really observe the uh, way the electrical bolt, like the it creates kind of a zigzag wavy formation with each of the branches, but also the line doesn't stay consistent. So our largest bolt is our brightest one. So that line was thicker, but there are some thinner. So there's some variations in the thick and thinness of our line. So that really helped to observe photographs of lightning before doing this. And it might help you as well. I'm making another piece that is Kind of branching down again these lines all these little branches are a lot thinner than our main middle lightning bolt and these ones are not hitting the mountain they're just going in the air and i'm going to do two smaller pieces hanging down towards the bottom if you want to try using the white paint pen, especially for these super thin branch pieces of our lightning bolt, you can just keep in mind that the white Posca paint pens do not get as bright. So you might have to do multiple layers. And then I am gonna go back over my first bolt with a second layer of paint. This bolt, is also slightly thicker than the rest of our branches as mentioned earlier but I'm gonna make it just a little bit more brighter and thicker to make that bolt more um, prominent so you can see just by making that a little bit thicker it creates extra brightness so it's striking the mountain or part of the mountain and I did little tiny lines kind of going outwards from the base of it and it's the, the shelf cloud, I did little tiny lines at the top to make it look like that, that part is bright. And we are going to paint our clouds in next. So I'll be using this number 12 bright brush. So it's a little flat brush. And I will be doing what is called a dry brush technique. That basically just means that I'm going to load my paint, um, just the tip of the brush in 
the Prussian and the white, so both of those colors. Um, but I'm going to use very little paint here. So I'm gonna start by kind of defining the bottom shape of the cloud, and I'm gonna let that paint run dry as I go up to the top of the canvas. Again, I'm using very little paint on the tip of the brush. So when I reload in this Prussian, for example, I only grab just a teeny amount of that Prussian blue. And I'm painting in curved strokes. So this is kind of like a shelf cloud with the curves of the cloud are facing downwards and we don't really see the tops of the clouds. We can grab some of that violet and have some violet in these clouds. So same thing, just a teeny bit of paint. I want a lot of that sky still showing through. So I'm not going to paint all everything above where I defined that cloud line so I can leave some of that open at the top but I do want the bottom part of the cloud to be a little bit brighter because the lightning bolt would be reflecting on that bottom part of the cloud so I grabbed a teeny tiny bit of white right there on the tip of the brush and just doing little tiny curved strokes right there on the bottom of the cloud just letting that gently blend in um, Again, this is dry brush because we're loading just teeny tiny bits of paint on the brush so it's not thick by any means. It might be helpful to have a towel handy so you can wipe off the paint off your brush. That way uh, you are guaranteed to only have tiny bits of paint on the brush. So one last little pop of white right down there uh, where our lightning bolt is connected to that cloud piece so that is extra bright in that area. I'm going to set my 12 bright brush off to the side and um, grab my 10-0 spotter brush again because I want to paint a lightning bolt that is inside the cloud. So a cloud to cloud lightning. And so I'm going to do the same kind of technique with this, but it's going to stay inside the cloud. Twist that brush to get that paint right there on the tip of the bristles. A very steady hand. This is going to be a thin piece, so I'm just very loosely letting that brush kind of graze the canvas. Um, kind of a jagged line that doesn't, it's not continuous. It kind, it kind of buckles and pick, picks up. And so this lightning piece, like lightning bolt, I'm going to let it branch out. And this is just staying inside of that cloud. Next, I am going to highlight the mountain. So our black mountain way in the distance would be kind of glowing with that bright lightning strike. And I'm going to grab my 12 bright brush again, load that in the white, and this is also dry brush technique. And so what I did was I wiped the brush off after I loaded it into the white to ensure that this is a very, very thin layer of white. In fact, it should not be covering all of that black. It's very see-through and I'm just utilizing this um, dry brush technique to um, highlight the left side of our mountain peaks. So I'm just kind of gently brushing the edges of the mountain and letting that paint just kind of run out and run dry as I go down the base of the mountain where it's all dark and shadowy. But the brighter part of the mountain is on the edge towards the left sides of the peaks. And I'm gently just kind of blending that dry brushed white out. Uh, again, wiping that brush to make sure that there's not a lot of paint on your brush. A lot of that black is still showing through. I'm just kind of dragging this part over to the right a little bit. But the right part of that mountain is a little bit darker. So we can create some depth and um, form in our mountains here. I'm going to just add a little pop of extra white over here on the far left edge. So that it's a little bit brighter. Dragging that down. A little bit more but I can drag it down so where it overlaps part of the mountain so that creates some mountain overlap so it's not just one piece it's just a range of different heights of mountains and then if I want kind of a smaller mountain towards the bottom I can use that white to help create that look so right here I'm dry brushing that white and bringing it down so that it overlaps that um, mountain and it creates kind of depth and new mountain ranges. So I can drag this one over to the right.
A little bit of dry brush down here at the bottom. And we are done with our mountain range. We're gonna rinse our bright brush off, set it to the side and grab our number eight round brush. We will be painting all of the saguaro cacti next. So you'll need your eight round, but you'll also need your four round too uh, to get into those smaller areas or to paint the smaller cacti. But I used the big eight round for our large cactus. So we have one sort of larger cactus in the lower left part of our painting and we want to use the Mars black. I also used a little bit of white and also the Prussian for this, but let's start with just the Mars black. Kind of water it down a little bit so that it's nice and flowy. And let's measure about eight inches from the bottom of the canvas. So that is going to be the height of our largest cactus. We don't need to measure any of the other cacti, just this one. So we have the big one in place and then all the other ones are gonna go smaller from there. So just took my ruler and found about eight inches. It can be higher or a little bit lower if you wanna change that. So I made a little mark. So that's how high I need to go with my cactus. The top part of the cactus is curved and then it gets slightly wider on the base. So it's kind of narrower at the top and just a little bit wider at the base. If it helps, you can grab your T-square uh, to help with the alignment of your, to make sure your cactus is vertical. So I'm just gonna use the T-square just for this cactus. I'm just kind of lining it up with the edge of the the canvas so I get my line all vertical and then I can go ahead and fill that in solid black. Just adding that little bit of water into the black helps with the flow of the paint. Just try not to use too much water. So we have our first shape of the cactus, pressing kind of hard on the bristles as I go down so that it is a little bit thicker. I'm gonna grab a little bit of titanium white on the brush and kind of gently blend that in before this black dries. Uh, vertical strokes with that titanium white kind of creates the texture of the cactus, but we're not going to go too realistic with our texture here. Just a little bit of white. Then when you're ready, you can do the arms. So same brush, but if you feel more comfortable using a smaller brush, you can. So I just pressed kind of lightly at first, curved my brush, and kind of pressed a little bit harder as I reached the base. So starting at the end, press kind of lightly at first stroke down, put more pressure on the bristles so that your stroke gets a little bit thicker as it reaches the base. So do as many arms as you want. Start at the top, stroke down, curve. So that arm turned out kind of cool. Um, adding a little bit, like double loading the brush in white and black kind of creates that effect because it mixes on the canvas. But utilizing that white not only looks like it's highlighting the cactus, giving it texture, but it's also giving us contrast because that mountain is kind of dark and adding a little bit of white into that black helps it to stand out a little bit better so it's not blending too much into our mountain. So I'm gonna add Another arm to this, one more arm to this cactus. Again, utilizing the black and the white, kind of letting them blend together. If you want to, you can do highlighting now or we can wait until a later step. I will do some um, more highlighting later on. Um, so we're gonna move on to our next cactus. So this one is the largest cactus all the other ones just get smaller from here. So there's one to the left of this one. It's not going to be as high and the middle piece is not going to be as thick. 
it's a little bit further in the distance. So the base of it is a little further up. The base of the first then one we did reached the bottom of the canvas. This one does not reach the bottom of the canvas. Um, but same technique, only we're just making it smaller. Utilizing the black and the white to kind of let those colors blend. Curving our brush for the arms. Again, feel free to switch to a smaller round brush if you need to use the smaller brush for these smaller cacti pieces. We don't have to use just the black and the white for our cacti. We have violet and we have Prussian blue on our palette and we have cerulean blue. So if you want to have fun and add different purples and blue tones to your cacti, you can do that. For this one, I'm going to use the Prussian blue. So it's going to look a little different, but also using that Prussian blue helps that color stand out against our mountain. So this part of our mountain is a little bit dark, but because my cactus is slightly lighter with that blue, and with this white that I'm blending in, it's going to help it stand out. So I'm just gently blending some white in. It's the same technique, starting with the middle piece, vertical line, curved at the top, a little bit thicker at the bottom. Do your arms, start at the end of the arm, stroke down, and as you stroke down, put a little bit of pressure on the brush to create this kind of a thicker base to it. You can go back in with your white, kind of highlight some of the edges of that. We can do other plants in our desert landscape. So we can do kind of an agave thing or some random shrubbery thing growing next to our cactus. So I just took the Prussian and black and white on my palette and just kind of stroked up to create a um, group of just thin curved strokes. And I'm going to do this over here on the right side of our big cactus. You can add those pieces kind of all throughout. If you want to paint prickly pear cacti, you can. Uh, so that is, you can definitely customize the landscape by adding different kinds of plants. A little bit of um, shrubbery to the right of that other cactus. We can kind of tap our brush, kind of stipple it all throughout this area to create some rocks or shadowy areas, just more interest in the texture. So I'm just taking that color that's on my brush and just kind of tapping it all along the bottom area, creates more interest in that area. Next, I'm going to paint all the little cacti that are way in the distance and all of those are on our bright blue middle land area. So I'm going to utilize the smaller round brush for this. Rinse off that bigger round brush, use the smaller one. These cacti are lighter, so I'm going to mix white together with the black to make kind of a medium to light gray. And it doesn't have to be the exact same shade that I'm mixing because all these are going to all be different shades of gray. The light is hitting those cacti very differently kind of all throughout. And so I'm just painting little tiny saguaro cacti. Little vertical pieces further in the distance. We may not see the arms on those, so I'm just doing vertical lines for those. Maybe there's a few larger ones that are closer down the bottom of our bright blue area. So just as you reload your brush, you wanna grab different amounts of the gray and the white and the black so that you vary your colors. And you can also use your blue and purple if you want to try out different colors in this area.
I'm going to go back over some of these with the titanium white and just let that loosely blend to highlight some of these to make them stand out a little bit better but also because that lightning strike is in the distance it is uh, making that land look very bright in this split second that it's striking that mountain so a lot of these saguaro cacti will be reflecting that so I'm just going back with my titanium white and just on the side that's facing the lightning strikes on the arms and on the base part of the cactus I'm just bl gently blending that white on the sides To add more interest into the ground area, I grabbed a little bit of that phthalo blue, black, whatever was left on my brush at this point, and I'm just doing some texture, um, very loose horizontal lines, kind of all scattered throughout that area. Gives it some more texture so it's not just solid light blue in the area, maybe they're rocks or shadows, but it gives that land something else. Next, I decided to add one more lightning strike over on the right. This one is a cloud to air lightning strike. It's not striking anything, but it is coming out from the cloud on the right side. So we have all this kind of blank space up here. And I'm gonna start at the top, do the same technique. This is that 10-0 round brush, very loosely letting that kind of graze the canvas kind of wiggling my hand as I do the lightning strike very loosely kind of pressing hard in some areas maybe the it's a little bit thicker and brighter in some areas and letting that branch out on the side brighter right there where it touches the cloud And next I'm going to add another coat of paint to this big lightning bolt that is touching our mountain. This piece is our biggest bolt, so I wanna make sure that it's brighter and that line is slightly thicker than any of the other lightning bolts that are in the painting. So just going back over that with a second, third, even fourth coat if necessary to make sure that that is super bright. And lastly, I'm going to use the bright, uh, the round brush. This is the 10 zero spotter brush that I'm still using just to add some more highlight to some of my cacti at the top. Just a little bit of white to help that to pop. Just be super careful not to go crazy with the white. Just a few little pops of white on the edges of our cacti. adding a little bit of black back in there to kind of dim down some of these pieces that got a little bit too bright. But this is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a desert monsoon storm. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.